Hi guys, so this week I'm going to talk about a few random books that I've read and really enjoyed. The first book I'm going to talk about is actually more a series of books and it's the Tales of the City series by Armistead Mopin. It's a really, really lovely series. Sarah and Rachel have heard me talk loads about it. The series is set in San Francisco. It's based around a group of friends who are, I think, in their 20s at the start, and then, and then you grow up with them over the series. This first book starts with Mary Ann Singleton moving to San Francisco, and she moves into these apartments on Barbary Lane, 28 Barbary Lane, with an eccentric landlady, Mrs Madrigal. Anna Madrigal has created this sort of family in these amazing houses that she lives, and it's so beautifully described that there was a TV series on Channel 4 a while back, and the whole way it was put together it was exactly as I pictured it. The house looked perfect, exactly as it was in my imagination. It's just so perfectly described. This really lovely San Francisco lane with flowers and steps and just I can't do it. Read the book you'll see how perfect it is. It's just a really really lovely book. The whole series takes you through a load of different life changes and you focus on different characters at different points in the story. So even though it starts off with Mary Ann there are other books that focus on other different characters a bit more. Um, characters that don't seem very big in this book will then become more prominent later on. You fall in love with the characters and you really care about what happens to them. This book came out in 1978 and the final book is coming out next year so there's been about 35 years from the first to the last and it's gone more or less in real time so these characters are now middle-aged slash old and you go through this whole thing with them and, and it's set in San Francisco so there's a lot of gay culture there obviously and the series actually went through the whole of the AIDS pandemic and it's very honest and truthful it's a really moving look at the whole situation and Armistead Mopin himself is gay and so it's told really from the eyes of someone who who lived through it and you're really getting like a very personal story he's confessed that the characters are very similar to him they're all bits of him and you can definitely see that his life is reflected a lot in these books but I think that just helps to make them so wonderful to read because it feels like you're just looking into a window of the family so I'll be really sad to see it go when the series finishes and I really really 100% recommend this. Sticking with Armistead Mopin, although the Tales of the City series are the books I love most, I think his best book is The Night Listener, which I don't have here, it's actually in London. I don't really know how to describe it. It's the story of an author, again the aspect of personal life is actually based I think on something that happened to Armistead Mopin. A kid writes a letter to him and he's had these horrible life experiences and yet he's really affected by this guy's writing and they build up a relationship but then um, stuff happens. I don't want to give anything away, but I really, really recommend it. It's not the book I expected to read when I started reading it, and also I'd read Tales of the City before I read The Night Listener, so it it's not the same at all as Tales of the City. It's a completely different type of book. It's more of a mystery. It's You're left at the end not quite knowing what happened? I don't know if that makes sense, but you at the end you're kind of a bit clueless. You don't know what's real, you don't know what's not. I really, really recommend that book. It was a great book. Another book that I recommend that I have here with me is The Art of Fielding by Chad Harbach. Harbach? Harbach. And this book I read because John Green recommended it, and as a rule, if John Green recommends it, I will love it. It's about a baseball player in college and other people in his college network. So it's a story of five people in this college and how kind of their lives are very intertwined. An action of this one kid affects them all in the end. Again, I don't want to give too much away, but it's basically baseball in American college. Sarah's read this already and she really liked it up to a point, but then I think she went off it a bit. My dad didn't like it, but he has a problem with books written in America. I don't know. I found it really gripping. I was infuriated by the characters at certain points, but I think that's a testament to how well they're written. Cause I was like, oh, you king idiots why are you being such complete and utter morons and making such stupid character choices if you look back on my twitter feed i think you'll find a tweet about me being so angry at a book that i put it on my head and just sat there expecting for you know me to pick up read the next chapter and then not to have done the thing i thought they're about to do but of course they didn't listen to me even though i told them not to do it they did it so that was about this book. I read this whilst I was working at Penguin, so the end of last year, around this time last year, and I was reading it on the bus on the way back from work one day, and I actually spoke aloud, half to myself, half to the book, on the bus, and I said, oh my god, this is gonna happen. It suddenly, there was just this moment where it dawned on me what the end of the story was gonna be. So again, not giving anything away, but it, 
I was really engaged in this book and for me that's a sign of a good book so that's that's that one at the moment I'm listening to Tina Fey's Bossy Pants audiobook which I'm loving but a few months ago I listened to The Art of Racing in the Rain by Garth Stein I think his name it sounds ridiculous but it's a book written from the point of view of a dog but he's a sort of a philosophical dog so even though he's a dog he has all these ideas that are kind of beyond dogdom he thinks that he's going to be a human when he dies when his dog life is over and he kind of waxes poetically on life around him so you see a life through a dog's eyes as his owner gets married has a child his life goes on all these things happen to him and this dog has all these thoughts and feelings and he's this guy's best friend the guy is his best friend and yet there's only so much he can do to communicate. It was a really lovely book. I don't know whether it would be different if I were reading it as a book rather than listening to it as an audiobook, but as an audiobook it, it worked so well. This is going to sound like a really weird thing to say, but it always felt like a dog talking. And there were some little touches kind of woven through that I really, really liked. How there are certain things that the dog doesn't understand, and there are certain things that the dog thinks that shows how ridiculous some things that humans think are. It's kind of like a child's outlook, but a child's outlook with wisdom, if you know what I mean. There are certain things he doesn't understand, but he understands more than we do in other ways. I really, really enjoyed it. And yeah, I think those are my book recommendations. I kind of have picked just such a random selection. So I'm sure there are things I will think about later that I should have mentioned. I maybe should just say some favourite authors now in case you have a gap in your book reading schedule and you want something to read. I love Mitch Albom, although I think he's maybe running a bit low on ideas. Tuesdays with Moray, Five People You Meet in Heaven, I think everyone should read. Steinbeck is here in my bookshelf, I don't know if you can see that. So I really love Steinbeck, so Grapes of Wrath, East of Eden are quite hefty books, but I recommend them. F. Scott Fitzgerald I absolutely love. I would say Gatsby isn't his best. I would say read Tender as the Night, Beautiful and the Damned. I think Tender in the Night is actually my favourite F. Scott Fitzgerald. That's probably all I can think of to say books wise. I'm bound to get back to London and look at my shelf and see loads of books I should have talked about because books I've read most recently are probably on my shelf there. But for now, books. Done. And I will see you all next week and maybe I'll have a whole new pile of books then based on your recommendations. Okay, bye! I got the book!